Well, good morning, everyone. My name is William Davis. I'm the Director of Education for Wilson Daniels. And welcome to another IG Live where we get to spend some time uh, with the new winemaker of Pierre Spar, Corinne Perez. So uh, thanks for everybody for joining. Um, as always in the past, you know, feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have for Corinne. They are about to get into the uh, thick of things with harvest in the Alsace region. And so we are going to go fast and here uh, out to Siegelsheim in Bebelenheim, uh, where we'll be joined by Francois and Corinne. Uh, hello, Corinne. How are you? Hi, hi. Oh, I, I can't hear you very well. Excuse me. You can't hear me? Ah, yes, it's better. Now it's yes. better. Good. <laughs> there we go. How, how's that for sound? And I know that, you know, you might have a little bit of buffering uh, as you're out in the uh, courtyard there at the 13th yes, century yes. Uh, buildings and offices. So uh, how, it looks like a beautiful day. Lots of sunshine. Uh, it's in, very, in very sunny. Very sunny, very hot. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say that, you know, well, would you prefer rain or uh, a little bit of sunshine? You know, no, as, as was... we uh, roll into harvest. Yeah, well, sun sunshine is better, of course, but here nowadays it's very, very drought condition, so it's maybe too much. <laughs> I can completely understand. For those of us that are in California joining in, uh, we're dealing with a, a number of forest fires especially around Napa Valley and in the North Bay. So, um, you know, a uh, shout out and uh, thoughts to them. Uh, hopefully they don't get evacuated during this time. Uh, but thank you so much for uh, spending a little bit of time with us. I know things are extremely busy, uh, both in the vineyards and as you get prepared for what's about to come into the winery, all those yes, uh, yes. great <laughs> yeah, it's it's going faster and faster. There's two days for finishing of preparing everything, the press room and washing everything. So, but we are almost ready for harvest. It's good. Now it's good. Yeah, because I believe you have a uh, meeting scheduled in uh, just a short period of time with the uh, with the team and with the workers out in the field. Correct. So, you you have you have a meeting in about yes the... yes yes we have a meeting in. Um, in the, in the north of Alsace to, uh, to plan everything, the days. We picked some grapes, some samples for, to know what, what's the best date, the best, uh, when, when to pick the grapes, the, the better day. And uh, now we are going to plan everything to, be, to, to have everything ready uh, for Cremant. We are, we are beginning with Cremant uh, on Monday and, um, and for Cremant Rosé. From, from Pinot Noir, and then we'll follow with Auxerrois and Pinot Blanc. We have around seven or eight days of, uh, of Cremant before picking the, the still wines. I see. So a very exciting time. Um, yes. So which kind of goes back to, you know, the reason that you moved to Alsace. How did you actually get into winemaking, Corinne? Oh. Well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, I, I, I was born in Lyon. From my, my parents were officials, so I was not in the, in the wine at all. My, my father used to drink wine, drink uh, wine, one glass of wine every weekend, but that's all. But um, I was fond of biology, and I studied uh, agriculture at uh, engineering level. And uh, during these studies, I went to Beaujolais as a, a student job. And, um, and there to add for, for harvest. And then um, I fall in love with the winemaker and with winemaking. <laughs> I'm, I'm not with the winemaker anymore, but the winemaking is still here. <laughs> That's okay. Your, your love continued for at least one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, which, which is interesting because you started, you know, if you started in France, but you spent some time in the new world, correct? Sorry, excuse me? You spent some time in the new world, correct? Uh, is that correct? You continued your winemaking uh, in yes. Oregon and Australia. Yes, yes, yes. I went to that's that's um, that was my um, my internship. I went to Oregon to uh, to learn how to um, to elaborate Pinot Noir. Well, I, yeah. I was yeah I was in Dijon. I was in Burgundy. So 
Pinot Noir was was um, our, our, today enfin, was one of our variety, but uh, but Oregon was very interesting for that. Mm. Well, you know, here's a side question for you: what what were the things you noticed that were very different between Gamay in, uh, in in Beaujolais? Oh, there you go, Francois. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, with Gamay and Beaujolais, and as you started to learn about Pinot Noir in, yeah. in, in Oregon. Well, Gamay is very easy. It's a, it's a variety where um, color and uh, f uh, aromas are very easy to, to, to take out of the grapes. It's very different from Pinot Noir. P Pinot Noir is very delicate, is more capricious. And uh, you have to work a lot to work more difficult. Well, it's more difficult to, to have the good color, to have the, the body. Uh, you have to, to taste every day to know if it's time to take it out of the, of the tank or not. So it's more complicated with Pinot Noir. But when Pinot Noir is good, that's just fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so how did you end up in, in Alsace? Or just well, by chance, <laughs> by hasard. Uh, uh, when, when, I, when I finished my study of uh, enology in Dijon, I was looking for uh, my first job. And uh, at that time, it was, it was quite, quite complicated for a woman to, to be hired in, uh, in a cellar. And uh, there, there was a small ad. I, know, I don't know if, if you say so, in the, yeah. in, the news, yeah, in the newspaper, in the mini cell uh, at, at that time. And, um, and it was in Alsace, it was in a laboratory for uh, doing consulting uh, and uh, analysis on wine. So I, I, came, I came in Alsace for four months, and it was in uh, 94, 1994. Oh, <laughs> and, I'm still, and I'm still in Alsace. So, so a long history, because you were with, uh, with Domaine Aller previously, yeah. correct? Yes, yes, that's yes. true, yes, that's true. First the laboratory, then Aller. Um, that was my, my first uh, experience in winemaking. I always wanted to be a winemaker, but I started by the laboratory and then I, I went to winemaking because one director, trust me, <laughs> after, ten, after 10 years in laboratory, uh, I proved that I was good enough to, to do winemaking. Yeah. And, um, and I, I spent, so since uh, 2003, uh, I mean, I'm a winemaker, really. I see. And, you know, you know, for those of you out there that aren't familiar with uh, Domaine Aller, um, you know, they're in dambach le correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in the, uh, in, in the Bastrin, as opposed to the Hogrin, what, what have you noticed that is fun about winemaking in Alsace and seeing the differences between what you found in the north and, you know, specifically with you know, the Grand Cru is now moving to, uh, you know, Grand Cru like uh, Mambourg and Schoenenburg, you know, because, you know, with, 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 the, uh, with the Grand Cru around Dambach, you might find, you know, a little bit of difference between the, uh, yes. the spoil types and the, uh, and, and the grape varieties. Yes, yes. The, the, the terroir, the soil uh, in, in Dambach la ville is, um, is much more light. It's more granite, granitic soils, granitic terroir. So, the, the wines are more delicate, more light. And here in the Mambour or in the Chenambour, you have um, limestone, you have uh, clay. So the, the terroir are more uh, stronger and the, 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 the vines are stronger also. It's, it's a full-bodied wine um, with very delicate aromas, but, but more expressive, more... Yeah, and maybe they they age better because um, because it's it's well, it takes longer to have mineral aromas in our Grand Cru nowadays than than uh, than in, in the Frankstein or in the in the Grand Cru of Dombar la Ville. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, Munchberg is very different than Mambourg. Yeah. You know? So uh, you know, so you've had vintages in Alsace started in '94. How many total vintages have you? Uh, have you had in, in, in Alsace now? As a winemaker? Yes. Oh, well, since 2003, so it means nearly 20 years. <laughs> so 
So you, you, you've seen it all, you know, obviously, you know, 2003, if you started that, you're yeah. a very warm vintage. It was you know. very, uh, very drought condition as well. No, no rotten berries and very, very dry, like, like uh, 2020. But I'm sure that you learned some things about the, in those early days with the 2000, uh, 2003 vintage and subsequent drought harvests over the past 17 years. What, the, what have you, you know, what's the, the, the biggest, uh, what's the biggest, you know, contributor that you've learned about uh, what's going on in Alsace? And, you know, uh, how do you work with your, uh, with the team, uh, with the number of vineyards that you have? I think the more important uh, we, we learned since uh, 2003 is to go and pick the grapes in August. <laughs> in, in night, yeah, it was very difficult to, to make it understand uh, to the wine growers in, um, in Alsace in, in, in 2003. Even the um, AVA, the, the, inten the, the instance, the, the regional instance, uh, they were still on holidays when we go and pick the grapes. They have usually they have to say yes you can go so but they were not here they were they were on holidays uh, this year uh, they they come back from holidays on the on the fifth of August and everybody is ready and now we know that we are going to pick the grapes in August more and more often and uh, especially, it's, it's, especially it's important the because I mean. because in, in in the year two thousand three we went to pick the grapes too late so it was it was a good year for Pinot Noir. It was very strong, very colored, but all the, the white wi wines, wi uh, they, they were um, maybe, it was too drought, it was too late. Uh, they suffered from drought conditions. So it was very difficult to have good aromas, very fruity and expressive. I see. Now, now we, we are more ready and uh, we are going to, to, to start on Monday because it's time to pick the Cremant and everybody is ready. So you said that there are drought conditions this year, but you know, what is the condition of the grapes uh, right now? Are you excited about the, the potential quality of the <laughs> harvest? There's a, there's a very good potential this year because um, uh, there, the, there's no, it's very, well, we have very healthy berries, very healthy grapes, no, no road, nothing, no diseases, it's, it's too dry. So that's very, that's very good because um, we, we protect the, the aromas, but we have to pay attention to go and pick them faster as we can. Now, now it's, uh, it's going to ripe very quickly. So it's, it's the only challenge to go and pick the grapes now. <laughs> I see. So how did that compare to the 2019 vintage? Uh, mm -hmm. Um, 2019. Oh, can you hear the the cigon? I can. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, uh, actually, Corinne, would you would you explain ex uh, what is going on there? You know, for the uh, for the birds that are on top of the um, on top of the roof. Oh, they they are. Well, it's just the, it's their home. And they are, they are um, like, um, cry, not crying, but um, they are singing. They are singing. They are singing to call all their friends, because the uh, Maison Spar is a good place to be for a cigogne. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you have seagulls so far away from the uh, from the ocean, and that they are yeah, but, uh, you know traveling to uh, to yeah. the Vosges Mountain and uh, to Alsace. Well, Alsace is very well known for for those birds. It's the, it's the it's quite kind of a, a symbol <laughs> symbol of Alsace. We have plenty, and they don't they don't uh, go away anymore. They stay here because it's it's the the winter is. Sonia enfin, is, is uh, hot, is more and more hot, so they don't have to leave anyway, <laughs> anymore. So they stay year round, they're not migrating. Yes, yes, they stay, even, even in winter. We, have all, we always have cigogne around. So they are, they, they, they're, they're landlocked, they are uh, land-loving mm. seagulls. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
So, you know, you, you, you talked about, you know, uh, how you worked with Pinot Noir. I'm, I'm really interested to, uh, to ask this question. What are the differences that you see between Pinot Noir in Oregon and Pinot Noir in Alsace? That's, that's really difficult because in Oregon, I was, in, uh, I, I, I was working for a Burgundian uh, house. So they, they, they kind of copy everything from Burgundy. Um, the yield, the, the way of, uh, of um, driving, driving the, <laughs> the, 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 the vines. Uh, here in Alsace, it's quite, diff it's quite diff diff different. But um, with, the, with the changing of the climate, of the, of the weather, uh, I think uh, our Pinot Noir goes um, more and more full-bodied, more and more, more and more strong. We can make better wines. Um, wine growers are used now to pick the pick some grapes that are when 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 you have too much grapes, too many grapes, they pick they pick them uh, on the floor on the soil to uh, to concentrate everything. So yeah, it's it's go, it's go, going to be better and better, and um, with no no roots no rotten berries. Uh, I think this year is going to be a really good year for, for Pinot Noir in Alsace. Wonderful, because I've, I've tasted a number of Pinot Noirs from Alsace, and certainly some of the, um, uh, the Pinot Noir from Pierre Spar, specifically mm -hmm. the Calcare, <laughs> which is a phenomenal bottle of wine if, any, if anybody gets a chance to try it. Um, so I see that there's a lot of potential for Pinot Noir, but you also have a deep love for Riesling. So, yeah. you know, why, why is it that you uh, love Riesling so much? Yeah, that's my favorite, really. Um, when you arrive in Alsace, you always start with Gewürztraminer, Vendange Tardive with sugar, and it's, oh, wow, it's wonderful. But uh, with the time and when you're getting older, <laughs> you, 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 you become, to, you become fond, fond of, uh, of dry wines, and uh, Riesling is the, is the king of the variety in Alsace, really. Uh, it's it's, all, it's also quite capricious. It's not very, very easy to elaborate, but when you have it, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, the, it's the variety who reveal the potential of the terroir the best. Uh, you, you can have um, different kind of, uh, of Riesling, fruity and floral on, uh, on strongest soils, or more mineral on, uh, on, um, on granitic soils. And when it's getting old, when the, the Riesling is getting old, it's, it's really wonderful. So you just have to buy it, put it in your cellar and forget it. And when you, <laughs> when you find it again, it's, it's, a, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful tasting. Well, you know, I do ask this of a few winemakers. You know, do you have a favorite terroir for Riesling? Uh, you know, you personally, in terms of your, yeah, you know, I, I know it. It's, it's mm -hmm. great to see the transparency of, of Riesling and how it works on different sites. But is there a, uh, is there a Grand Cru or uh, a specific village that really speaks to you with all the years that you've been? Uh, there, you are two, there are two, in fact. There's the Munchberg uh, in, in, the north, in the north of Alsace and the Schönenbourg. Ah. Because the, the, Ries, the Riesling on, on, on the Schönenbourg terroir is, is just wonderful. It it uh, it ages very well. Uh, it's uh, it's full bodied. It's ve uh, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of aromas. You you always discover new new aromas, new new emotions in, by drinking uh, Riesling on Schönenbourg. Yeah, I think that Schönenburg is is one of those crew that a lot of people, you know, it's only too often overlooked by you know Schlossberg or Rosacker. But you know, the the uh, to think that it's right between those two. You know, that, you know, you, it's, it's in a very, very specific area and a sweet spot um, for many of the more well-known Grand Cru uh, in Alsace. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've tasted a, a number of older Schoenenberg. I tasted uh, one from uh, 1983 that was mm. absolutely uh, stunning uh, when I was in France maybe 15 years ago. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. It's, it's, it's going well. It was probably wonderful. <laughs> and, and on the Grand Cru Chenambourg, 
the Riesling are good every day, every year, every year. <laughs> every millisim is good. Uh, you, you, you never have something because it's all very old vines uh, with, uh, with very deep uh, Root. acid roots yeah that's it. and and so they they can they can pass through road condition or any condition and it's always good you just have to find the good date to pick it and after that it's all right well i think that's what makes a grand crew a grand crew is the consistency yeah. even in challenging vintages yeah, um, so moving from uh from from riesling and although you will use Riesling from time to time, certainly for the uh, uh, sparkling wines. Let's talk a little bit about the Cremant, because um, mm -hmm. that's what you'll be harvesting in the next uh, few days. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you see uh, any, uh, you know, major adjustments, you know, uh, in, in the 2020 vintage to make for these wines? And where do you see the, because the wines are very popular here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the uh, the direction of Cremant in the region and for Spar? Well, well Cremant is, is very well known in uh, in Alsace. Uh, Alsace and Cremant are very well known in France too. They are just after Champagne, <laughs> and um, well, in uh, in Pierre Spar, my my predecessor was uh, really a reference uh, in in Cremant d'Alsace. So. I'm just, I just want to keep the, the style of the Maison for the, the Cremant uh, Blanc de Blanc and for the Cremant Rosé. I just want to be as good as he, he was. And then I, will, I think I will, um, I will bring a more maybe feminine touch or uh, by, by developing the, um, the gamme with a mono varietal. Uh, oh, I see. Like, like Chardonnay or... Blanc de Noir, uh, we are moving also on organic Cremant for next year. So that's, that, that's, that's going to be uh, our direction um, with HVE, uh, high value and environmental and, uh, and organic. It's going to be uh, the next. Uh, I'll be the next stop. Looks like a truck's yes. coming in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's okay. You know, we, we, we thank you again because we know how busy things are starting to, get, to become uh, yeah, both thank in, you. The, thank uh, you so in the offices and the winery. So is there, are there any uh, parting words? I know that you uh, need to get ready for the, uh, the meeting and we really mm -hmm. thank you and Francois for your time. Yeah, you're it, looks, welcome. It, it looks absolutely beautiful there. Um, I, do, I did have some stock photos of the, uh, of the building, but it, it doesn't do uh, justice of what you already have there. I mean, it's, uh, there's so much history with, the, uh, with not only the estate, but the building and the yeah. uh, courtyard that you're in. It's, so, it's just uh, a very, very nice uh, region, nice area. <laughs> Well, uh, good luck with, uh, with Harvest. Thank uh, you, uh, thank you. Uh, bon chance. And, uh, you know, if there, you. did anyone happen to have any questions at all for Corinne? Uh, you know, now's the time to ask. No? No. no. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think they're blown away by the, uh, by, by, by the view. So, Corinne, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with the team now. We... Really hope to see you uh, soon when the uh, pandemic allows everyone to travel. Um, we'll we'll so talk we... about the, the harvest <laughs> nearly next well, time. You know, right, you know, one, yeah, exactly, to see, to see that in person. But, you know, it, it looks like it's going to be a wonderful, uh, wonderful harvest and a, uh, a great crop with a lot of quality. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, thank you again for your time. And, you know... Okay. Bye Say bye. hello to the team for us. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. All right. Well, guys, thanks again for uh, joining us on this IG Live. And, you know, join us again for uh, upcoming segments with our winery partners from around the world. Cheers. <laughs>